A PowerPoint with just writing would be really boring for viewers to watch. So one of the strengths is we want to go up to insert and put in some pictures. So there's two choices. We can go to online pictures to search the internet or just pictures which will open up your own computer. So if you've already saved some shots, maybe you took them with your camera, this is the one to do and you would click on the picture and then click insert. I want to put four pictures in, so I'm going to hold down the control key and then I'm going to highlight all of my four pictures, still holding down the control key, then I'm going to let go of the key and click insert. And it just means I can bring four pictures in at once. Now they're all going to come in huge, they're all going to be kind of jumbled up, so we need to move them and resize them. So you go to the corner of the picture and then you just click on it and drag down. It's really much better to work with the corners of the picture because if you pick the side we're going to get a really thin picture like this or if you pick the top and you come down we're going to get a really kind of squat fat picture so you're going to lose the ratio between the height and the width so it's always better head to the corner to where the dots are drag it in there and then you've got your picture a smaller size you can also just click on it and use your mouse to drag it into place wherever you want it to be so this slide is about food photography so these are photos of taken as a student of photography and I now want to pick them up and move them about in such a way that they're going to make a really interesting design when I do my talk my PowerPoint presentation. So I'm just resizing them, lifting them up and moving them about. I think a real strength in PowerPoint is the fact that you can work with pictures in this way which would maybe be a bit more difficult to do in Word where you have to format them and that can be a bit of a hassle to do. So I think working in PowerPoint with pictures is a real advantage. Now that I've pretty much resized them all, I'm looking at the layout and I feel that this picture over on the left here, um, I don't like the way that it's sitting kind of behind the cocktail picture. When I move it, then I'm going to lose some of it at the right, at the left hand side there. So I right click on it and there's this bring to front option. So if I click bring to front, what I'm saying is I want this picture to sit in front of the cocktail picture. Um, now I feel that there's a bit of dead space at the sides here. So now I'm still clicked on my picture, I can go up to picture tools and there's a crop function. So if I click on that and I click on crop, then I can cut bits out of the picture I don't want. And I do that by just dragging the little black symbol in and the shaded parts are the parts I'm cutting away. So once I've drawn it in, I'm happy to cut that off. I just click anywhere else on the screen and that's those pieces cut off. And obviously you could do back if it had been a mistake, if you, if you actually thought you wanted to keep something. So it's a really helpful tool to be able to crop. What we're also going to do here is work our way through picture tools and just show you the range of different things you can do. So up at the top left here, you can remove the background. Now, as you can see, it hasn't really worked very well. And to be honest, I think as a feature, it's probably not the best one. But if you wanted to play about with it, you could mark areas to keep and, you know, you could really go into that. But I think that's a more difficult one to use. Corrections will make things lighter or darker, so you can make things really bright like I've done there, that's really sort of um, floodlit. And the colour version will give you an overall wash, so like a blue wash there, or we could go more of the grey shade, we could head to a really extreme black and white. So if you're doing a more arty project, that might be something you want to use. Artistic effects are things like paint effects, neon, pencil effects, so it looks as though your photo has actually been a piece of artwork or it's been drawn. Um, so that might be something that you want to look at if it's something you feel you want in your presentation. Along here you have these square boxes and what they're doing is they're putting a frame around the picture. So this is a particularly popular one um, with a sort of a stuck on effect and this one also gets used a lot a rounded shadow effect but probably this is the one I use the most, the soft edge. So it just takes off the harsh line. There's a whole selection here that you can see so if you want to do that and you can add colour as well um, that's something you can look at. The picture effects are probably even more extreme so you can really increase the glow, change the colour, you can add in different soft edges, there are really extreme things like 3D rotations so you can have your pictures at an angle. So that's me kind of got my picture lying down there, I can also have my picture sitting kind of at the side. Um, so depending what type of presentation you're doing that might be appropriate for you. I'm just going to add the blurred effect to all of the edges of my pictures. Um, just to sort of give them a kind of a softer look and less of a hard edge.
Now on this next slide, I've decided I want to have a really large picture. So I'm going to insert in my picture that I took from the train looking out of the window. And I think it's really effective to have full-size pictures sometimes, because if you're doing a big PowerPoint presentation on a screen, then the picture is going to be hugely magnified and you can really get the effect of it. So if you've done sort of artwork or this is photos of your work creatively, then that can be a really good effect.